who killed Jesus. In Acts chapter 4, Peter was praying and he, and he says this in verse 27, For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Peter is saying that God had anointed Herod and Pontius Pilate. He, God is the one who put them in power to crucify Jesus Christ along with the Gentiles and the Jews, which as we know, they were envious of Christ. They hated his teachings. They hated his claims and they desired to kill Christ. But behind all of that was God himself. It was God who had predetermined for those things for those events to come about according to God's plan. It was God's plan to send Jesus Christ to be crucified and to be raised again so that sinners could be forgiven. That is the good news of the gospel. The good news is, is how God made a way for sinners to be forgiven and be reconciled to God. To have peace with this God. To have peace with the God who is holy righteous and just and this is the big dilemma of the gospel this is the dilemma how can a righteous and just god forgive sinners how can a god who is perfect in righteousness which means that he hates everything that is unrighteous how can a god who is perfect in justice forgive sin how can he not count the, his people's sins against them? How, how, how can he just do it? How can he just let it off the hook? That is, that is the, the, the dilemma. Because God is a holy and righteous and just God. And even, even the fact that God is love. You know, people think because God is love, that means that he has no hatred. But God has hatred, hatred precisely because he's love. Because God, since He is love, He must hate that which is unloving. You see, when you love someone, you, you desire their benefit, you desire their good, and you would hate to see anything that would come harm them. Love hates, true love hates that which is opposite of, of love. And because God is love, He hates that which is unloving. And what is and and what sin is unloving, sin is missing the mark. Sin is missing that standard, missing the standard of God's glory. It's missing the standard of God's greatest commandments, which is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and missing the standard to love your neighbor. That is what sin is. That it's falling short of those standards, and because of that, God must punish sin. If Since he is righteous and since he is just, he can't just let sin off the hook. And this is the big dilemma. And this is what Paul the Apostle was so passionate about as he's being inspired by the Spirit to write Romans. From Romans chapter 1 to 11, he is giving a glorious exposition of all the aspects of the gospel. And as believers, if you're a Christian... That is that is your goal. It's to to grow in the in the. It's to plunge the depths of the gospel. It's to grow, to grow in the grace and knowledge of the gospel. Why? Because as Romans says, it's in the gospel that the righteousness of God is revealed. Paul starts off the letter in Romans and he says that he is eager to preach the gospel to those who are in Rome. Why why is he so eager to preach the gospel to those who are in Rome? As a matter of fact, he says to the saints. He wants to preach the gospel to the saints because the saints never outgrow the gospel. And why? He says, because the gospel, for, for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for the, to those who believe. Because in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith to faith, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel today has been reduced to saying a prayer and just merely making a profession of faith. The gospel has been reduced to Jesus has a 
Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And though there's truth to that, if you're in Christ Jesus, that is not the gospel. The gospel is, is the good, new, good news of how God has saved sinners and has made a way for sinners to be reconciled to him. And we see that especially so clearly in the book of Romans. But what I want to talk about is how God is the one who killed Jesus. It was God who sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross. It was God who was offended. And in order for God to forgive sinners, he must satisfy his justice against sin. And he does this in the gospel. He does this by the sacrificial work of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Romans chapter 3, uh, you, you know, when you read Romans chapter 1 and 2, Paul talks about how all, all, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, whether you've had a religious upbringing or not. You know, the Jews, they had the Mosaic law. They had the law of God that was given to them through Moses. But they broke it. They broke it time and time again. But even those who didn't have the law of Moses, they Paul says that the work of the law is written on their hearts and their conscience bears witness against them. You see, all men know that they're sinners. All throughout history, all, all throughout history, mankind have, have had a knowledge of God. They look at creation and that is why a bunch of different religions have formulated all throughout history is because people know their conscience bears witness to them that they're sinners men don't need to be told they're sinners they already know that they're sinners but they suppress that truth they 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 don't want to be told they want to continue to live in sin but people know that they've offended a righteous and a and holy god and so that is why people throughout all different religions and throughout history they have always tried to come up with some sort of sacrificial system to appease the God that they know exists. Because all men are created in God's image. And the Bible says, for although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God. All men know God, but we have failed to honor Him. And that's what sin is. Sin is failing to honor the God who is worthy of all love. Sin is failing to honor the God who is worthy of adoration. Sin is not fearing the Lord, not acknowledging Him in all your ways. Sin is not loving your neighbor perfectly. Sin is missing that mark. And so we may think, mankind think, this, the problem with humanity is they think that, that, well, murder is very bad, but lying is just a little sin. But all sins, from the greatest to the least, have incurred God's judgment. And so the question is, the question that all of humanity needs to ask themselves is, how can this righteous and holy God pardon me if I'm a sinner? And the, the precise answer is that it was God who sent forth Jesus Christ to satisfy his justice against sin so that those who believe upon Jesus Christ might have eternal life. And so in Romans chapter 3, after he deals with all people, being under sin, he says, What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. Whether you have a religious background or not, whether you are in a remote island who has never heard the name of Jesus, never heard anything about God, or whether you come from a religious background and you've heard about Christ or you've heard about God, you've heard about His law, all men are under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Paul is giving us a summary of the state of humanity that ultimately no one does any good. At the end of the day, Men have fallen short of that standard. And even when they do good, they still miss the mark. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. 
and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That is the summary of, of all of humanity. There is no fear of God in their eyes. All men have failed to acknowledge him by not living in perfect fear of the Lord because those who fear the Lord acknowledge him. Those who fear the Lord honor him. Those who desire and want to honor his glory live for him. But sin is missing that mark. And so he says, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. This, this, this is the grand truth. All of false religion can be summarized in this, trying to justify yourself, trying to make yourself righteous by doing deeds of the law, by trying to be a good person. But, but God has already clearly demonstrated that all of humanity has missed the mark. You on your best day miss the mark. And God through Paul is saying, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law condemns because we cannot live to that perfect standard. There needs to be an atonement. The only hope for humanity is someone who can stand in the gap and pay the debt that we need to pay. Because Romans tells us, Romans 6 tells us, the wages of sin is death. Ezekiel tells us, the soul that sins shall die. And men try to find all sorts of ways to make themselves right with God. But only God can make man right with himself. And how does he do it? How does he do it? Now you see, many people have an issue with this teaching today. They have, they have an issue with the reality that God poured out His judgment upon Christ on that cross. But this is the very heart of the gospel. Outside of the atonement of Jesus Christ, there is no forgiveness of sins. There is no way. There is no, we cannot climb up to God by doing any good deeds or any good works. Our hope, our only hope, is to cast ourselves upon what God did for sinners. And this is what God did. To deny this work that, that Paul's about to preach is to deny the very way of salvation. And he says, But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by His blood. Notice, it was God who sends forth Jesus as a propitiation by His blood. What is propitiation? That is the appeasing sacrifice. It is... God, Jesus Christ became the propitiations for, for, for those who believe in him. Meaning that Jesus Christ satisfied, he appeased God's judgment upon that cross. God will deal with all of humanity's sin. God will do it. He has either dealt with it upon the cross or you will have to deal with it in hell. God will not let sin off the hook. God is too perfect and too righteous and too loving to do that. He's a perfect judge. You, no one would want a judge who lets crimes off the hook. Men get angry. We, we, and we rightfully get angry when, a, when there is a crooked judge who lets somebody off the hook for the crimes that they've committed. But yet, should we expect God to do the same? Of course not. God forbid. So Paul says God sends forth Jesus as a propitiation, meaning Jesus satisfied 
the wrath of God by His blood, by His life, through faith to demonstrate His righteousness because in His forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time His righteousness. Now notice this, that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. God is just in forgiving sinners because He dealt with sin on the cross of Jesus Christ. He can be just and the justifier, meaning He can still remain righteous and holy. He, he has not lowered the standard. He has remained and will always remain righteous. He will always remain holy. God cannot be anything other than He is. God can never be unholy. God can never be unrighteousness, uh, unrighteous. God cannot change. He is perfect in all of His attributes. And it says that He that he might be just and the justifier. He can count sinners as righteous and still be just because Jesus Christ is the propitiation, meaning he paid the debt for sinners, for those who believe, to those who receive the work of Jesus Christ. That is who the work is for. The righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus to all and on all who believe the only way that you and I can be righteous is by believing what Jesus Christ did upon that cross and what God the Father did by pouring out His judgment. When Jesus was saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What was happening? He was quoting Psalm 22, which was a, which was a prophecy about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And as Christ is on the cross, the, the clouds are being darkened because the judgment of God is being poured upon Jesus Christ. He is being crushed for sinners. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. He, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin. That is why Jesus can be the propitiation for sinners because He never deserved to die. He lived a perfect life. He perfectly feared God. He perfectly honored His Father. He perfectly walked in the law of love all the days of his life. And therefore, he is able to be that sacrifice for sin. He is able to be that propitiation. And it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. People want to say that, that God is this God whom unbelievers, scoffers, they want to mock God. And even professing believers, they want to reject this truth. They don't want to talk about God's righteousness. They don't want to talk about God's anger. But it's all over Scripture. But it's not as if Jesus Christ needed to satisfy some sort of temper tantrum. God's anger against sin is perfect. It's a perfect and precise anger. It is not as one that's uncontrolled, like the Greek gods who needed to be propitiated because they were, they were gods that men invented. They were gods who weren't perfect. They were gods who weren't righteous. They were just gods who were just angry and doing whatever they, whatever men made them to, to, to resemble. But God, you know, John the Baptist said this, the axe is laid at the root. Or even the Psalms talk about the arrow. The arrow is bent. He has his, the arrow bent. His bow is ready. Because God's aim, God's judgment against sin is perfect. All of His standards are perfect. And the hatred that He has towards sin is perfect. And Christ Himself was sent by God. God demonstrated His love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the good news of Jesus. And we see this truth that God crushed Jesus on the cross in Isaiah 53, which is one of the most vivid prophecies of Jesus Christ. And it says this, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. 
He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Stricken and smitten by who? God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. You see Romans 3 is being clearly demonstrated here you know paul paul clearly sees this truth all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way that is what that is what sin is turning to our own way the way that seems right to man and and the lord has laid on him who who did that it was the lord that treated christ as a sinner upon that cross he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth." Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, or it could be translated crush him. He has put him to grief. It says it pleased God to crush him. It pleased God to lay upon the iniquity, the transgression of his people upon Jesus Christ. No greater love than, than no, no greater love can be known that those who have turned aside like sheep, those who've walked in their own ways, those who've despised God and His honor and has rejected His glory, God in love, desire to save the very people who dishonored Him, who became unthankful, who became, who became those who, who would trample upon His law. And God laid upon Christ the iniquity of us all. God was pouring out His judgment upon that cross so that sinners can be forgiven. That is the good news of the gospel. That is the gospel message. It was God who killed Christ. And yes, God ordained, God anointed, as, as we read, Peter says that God anointed Pontius, Pilate, and Herod. And yes, it was the Jews' wickedness and the Gentiles' wickedness that, that they wanted to kill Christ because they hated Him, because, because of His purity, because He was righteous, because he, the light, he was the light of the world and, and men didn't want to come to the light because they loved the darkness. But God, in His love, up, has upheld His justice by sending Christ to be crucified and to be raised again on the third day because a dead Savior can't save. But because Christ's work upon that cross was, was satisfactory toward His Father, God had raised Him up from the dead. And now we can be forgiven in Christ Jesus. That is the gospel message. And if you are a believer, that is the gospel message that we must proclaim that is the message of that we must be telling our neighbors is that God has found, has made a way for sinners to be forgiven and he has not lost an ounce of his holiness an ounce of his righteousness an ounce of his justice in doing so but it's only through faith in Christ it is only through the blood because there's only one sacrifice and only one perfect sacrifice because by works of the law, no one's going to be justified. Because at the end of the day, when all, when, all, when all people who have trusted in their good works stand before God, they will have to give an answer for all the ways that they have fallen short. They will have to give an answer for all the ways that they have fallen short in honoring God, even in their good works. 
Because even though people out there do many charitable things and they do many good works, they don't do it for the honor of God's name. They don't do it in thankfulness toward their Creator. And that is the judgment of the world. But the good news is that you can be justified. The good news is that those who are in Christ Jesus are made righteous by Christ and Him alone. And any other gospel, any other gospel that denies the work of propitiation, meaning Christ appeasing the judgment of God, any other gospel is a gospel that damns people to hell. It is a gospel that does not save. Like Paul said, it is the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Amen.